True. All right, guys. Yeah. So last time we covered uh, the uh, the final topic was how to settle vendor invoices. So we finished the procurement part, and now we'll uh, we'll be talking about the charges. Uh, since charges are related to procurement processes as well as sales processes, because charges are added on purchase orders as well as sales orders. So we'll be talking what type of charges and how the charges are implemented on purchase orders, sales orders, and various other documents in Dynamics 365, okay? So I'll first let you okay. know that the, the charge setups are present in accounts payable. And if you navigate to the charge setup, here you'll find some things related to charge. Similarly, in accounts receivable, and in the setup tab, you'll find the charges setup. Okay. So prior to that, there is something called auto charges. Also, also there are charges code. The most important setup is the charges code. So this is the place where you define what are the various charges and what are the GL postings of those charges. So right now you can see. For example, if I want, uh, let me consider a simple scenario. I'm trying to buy something and I want to add a freight charge. So let me say, I'll add a freight. So this is the charge code. Here is the description. So can give any kind of description. Then, the most important thing is debit and credit. So usually whenever we, we are buying items, so merchandise inventory is debited. And uh, so, so here also we'll try to debit the item. We can select what exactly we want. We can uh, debit the item and we can credit the customer or vendor. So this is the usual scenario. Otherwise you can have separate postings, you can have separate. So this is somewhat what we call like load on inventory. Like you are trying to debit the item, for example, uh, there is a hundred dollar of net amount on the line and twenty dollars are the charges so what will happen is now 120 will be debited on the item itself the ledger account of that item or we call it ledger head for example inventory raw materials and 120 is something that will be standing as a credit balance for the vendor most of the times what is happening is like we're not uh, like it may be a third party freight uh, we are really not charging uh, we are really not uh, the vendor is not involved in the charges so for that purpose you what you can do is that instead of doing that you can just click on the ledger account you can click on the posting there are a lot of posting types you can click on order freight and you can specify the freight account so now what will happen is that when that, like, for example, let me say freight inbound. So now the entries will be a little bit different. Now this charge is not being credited to the vendor, but uh, this account, uh, it may be a third party GL account or anything as such, uh, this account. So are you understanding the concept of why the charges codes are important? Because here we are defining what should be credited and what should be debited when you are going to apply that particular charge. So any questions and doubts here, guys? The posting is not clear for me. The posting uh, okay, code so that they're, you're selecting. Okay, this. so, yeah, so, there, yeah, so there are they're actually, are these, are, these are the inbuilt postings, postings type. Uh, in Dynamics AX, what is a thing like whenever you are trying to do a posting, that will happen. But uh, along with that, you can also tag what type of posting is. So these are like the built-in types of postings. So, okay. for example, order fee, order cash, sales order discounts. So, all the possible postings uh, that that could be present are here. So, like we'll select uh, which is like you know, so that whenever you look at the transaction, you should not get confused. Okay, this is type like freight freight type posting, or okay. order fee or order something like that. You mm -hmm. know, so these are all the possible types of postings. So we are just tagging it so that we can get a good description and good posting type. We can at least, we should it not get confused. For example, if we select uh, the bank statement here, it will look very much confusing. Anyway, the entry is going to, uh, this is the one which is going to be credited, but still the correct posting should be mentioned, you know? So these are all the inbuilt postings that are present in Dynamics AX. Possible types, okay? 
uh actually uh, i'm not the finance person but uh, the debit and credit could you explain a little <clears throat> yeah so this is like for example right now uh, so this is a this is a usual scenario see uh, what we are doing is uh, whenever uh, this is uh, these are the two types uh, these are the two ways in which we usually you know uh, it's all about the posting of voucher entries for example 100 dollar is something that i'm going to buy so the the item uh, is debited you know these are the gl entries in accounts uh, if you like it's very basic like what are the uh, entries that should be posted when you are doing the purchase order invoicing so during the purchase order invoicing so like if you if you dig a little bit what are the what are the you know entries that should be posted so item is debited and vendor is credited take the simplest scenario no tax no sales tax and uh, like uh, no charges let me say 100 dollars you are trying to buy something okay so the final entry that will go is uh, 100 dollars debited Uh, in the account for in the merchandise inventory account and hundred dollars credited in the uh, vendor. So then vendor okay, will have a we are paying, right. Uh, the vendor. Uh, yes, we are we are buying vendor. from vendor and okay. when we yeah and when we will do the vendor payment, then what will happen is that that hundred dollars which are standing as a credit balance, then finally when we are uh, paying the vendor, then the in uh, then the voucher entry will be. that vendor account will be debited by 100 dollars and credited to some other offset account maybe you are paying it with cash or maybe you are paying uh, let me say you are paying it with uh, your account cash in hand then cash in hand will be uh, credited so this is the way you know the voucher entries are posted so now as far as charges coming now the charges asking okay since the charge is going to be applied on to the order line so what should be the debit entry for the charge and what should be the credit entry for the charge so this is the very common scenario usually what we are doing is anyway we are buying the material so we want that uh, cost of charge also to be applied on the item then we will select the item here since 120 which is 100 uh, 100 dollars for the item and 20 dollars for freight but we want that the cost that 20 cost should also be uh, should also impact the cost of item anyway we are buying buying the item it's like a, a kind of a load on inventory so what we'll do is then we'll select the item here if we don't want that our freight cost uh, should debit the item uh, maybe you want the freight cost uh, uh, not to debit the item but to debit some other gl account then you can click on some other gl account type posting order freight and maybe type some another account for example like internal charges so this is like right now the charge code is asking okay since i am going to be applied please tell me what to debit and what to credit okay okay so right now this will do what uh, this will add $20 onto the item 100 plus 20 so the merchandise inventory will be debited with $120 and uh, $100 was already already being credited to the vendor plus $20 is also again going to be credited with the vendor if we select customer vendor here but if we are going to select this now the customer is only credited with 100 dollars and this account will be credited with 20 dollars now the account posting is happening in a separate account all right okay so this is the most common scenario uh, this one right now it's saying you should not specify the account since you already selected customer vendor let me try to select it again yeah so we've created this charge code so this is the most important a uh, setup how to create charge codes you should know that so after that um, let us try so then there is something called automatic charges guys automatic charges are something uh, which you can define the header charges or the line ch charges so as soon as you are creating a purchase order Uh, the charges will be applied on to uh, that particular vendor so if you can define the various charges for example let me delete this one i'll try to add so let me select the table i'm uh, let us let us select our vendor so this is our vendor click on save so charge code so let me say a charge code of freight there are also various categories that we'll explain after some time for now let me say i want a charge code of freight and 25 dollars 
So once I click on save, so this is a kind of an automatic charge. Now, every time, whenever I'm going to create a purchase order with, uh, with the type, this vendor, then this type of charge will be applied. And here also comes the concept of two types of charges. Let me try to add a purchase order first, and then we'll explain. There is something called header charge, and there is something called a line charge. So if I open a purchase order, let me try to create a purchase order. So this was our item. Let me say a quantity of mm, two. Okay, so if we if we click here in the financial, so this is the place where we can have a look at the charges on to the order line. On this order line, if I click on maintain charges, we'll find nothing. So these are called the line charges, which are specific to every line. Okay. And then we have in purchase order, in purchase tab, maintain charges. So as you can see, a charge of type freight already applied on 25. Okay, so this is the charge that is applied onto the whole purchase order. It's not specific to any line. So is the concept of header charges and line charges clear to you? The any kind of confusion there? And the header I understand, but this this line charge. Yes, yes. So right now we haven't applied anything onto the line. Only one charge is allocated, and that is allocated onto the whole PO. Here oh, okay. also you can see that we have twenty-five dollars as charges, and the net amount of the line was one twenty thousand. There we have, and therefore mm -hmm. the total invoice amount will be one twenty thousand plus twenty-five. So okay. although this, this might look a little bit unfamiliar, but then we have something called allocate charges. So basically you can have uh, one charge on the whole PO. And finally, what you usually do is you try to allocate this charge onto the various lines in various ways. So that is also something so that we'll talk about that also. So this is how, and for example, if I want to apply a line charge now, uh, specific to this line uh, let me click on financials click on maintain charges and let me add another charge let me say that was a kind okay of that is fee. for only the line yeah uh, let me say a handling fee of 12 dollars so if i click on save and now if i look uh, i'll see 25 plus 12 so it will add up here 37 okay but still it will show that $12 are only for this line and $25 is being applied onto On the, the whole total. purchase order. Yeah. So okay. If you look at and and can you can you relate the charges uh, to an item vendor combination? Uh, item vendor combination. Uh, you're talking about auto charges? Yeah, auto charges. Yes, uh, that can definitely happen. If you click on instead of header if you navigate to the line you will see to the line yeah will become enabled so here you can specify any item so instead of being applied on to the you know onto the po it will be applied onto that ah, particular okay. line item so this is the way you can specify the auto charges because usually there are items and we really don't want to define the charges again and again so what the uh, ERP users are doing, they're like, okay, let me specify all the possible auto charges and then we can later on add it on, uh, onto the purchase orders if needed. So auto charges can be of both types header uh, type line. So this will take care of that. And plus also there are a lot of things like charge groups and something like that. So which will like automatically add the charges. But for now, let us understand all the aspects of charges first, okay? So this is one thing. 
and that needs okay. to be considered. And that, that is a, there's a whole number. If, if you add the, uh, the item in the line, mm -hmm. the charge is going to be five uh, for the whole quantity, or it's going yes. to be by unit? Uh, it is going to be, yeah, that, that is again nothing. See, that, that is what I was trying to tell you. Fixed, oh, okay, Fixed means yeah, only yeah, yeah. whatever the quantity is. And then, yeah, that's really a nice question. Yeah, we were going to talk. Then there is something called pieces which means if I click this, now this will mean that if my line quantity was, uh, let me say uh, 10, then it will uh, 10 into five, it will show $50, okay? So let okay. me try to uh, show you here only, I'll, add, I'll delete this one and let me try to add the various types of charges here. So since the quantity is, let me make it uh, 10. So once we do that, so we have 600,000 here. So let me try to add various types of charges. So if I click on maintain charges, so fixed means $12, which will show us. So only our 12, then we have something called per piece. So per piece is going to be added, let me say uh, $2, but of type pieces. Now the total quantity should be two into 10 equals 20 so it's also showing you calculated amount 20 okay so 20 uh, plus 25 uh, that should come to 45 okay so per piece means now it is going to be applied on individual quantity then we have something called uh, percent Person. So this will take the percent of uh, the line, uh, percent of the net amount on the line. So if I say, okay, I just want um, uh, 10%, then it will calculate the amount as 60,000. Correct. That is the 10%. Uh, fixed pieces and percent. I, I haven't seen anyone uh, specifying this proportional or external, but feel free to explore this one out. Although like we've never tried. Uh, usually you have, okay. And, and, okay, continue uh, yeah. please. Okay, so like these are the various ways in which you can specify and you will have a calculated amount here. So fixed okay. and pieces are the most common types. Yeah, some people are obviously using the percentage. So once you navigate through all of these, uh, after this is done, now another thing is, since you have already, let me say, you already have something called maintain charges onto the PO, then usually what the users are doing is, uh, every, every line is going to have some kind of charge. So they are only adding these charges so that they can later split these charges onto the various order lines. So that okay. also is done with the allocate charges method. So first let me create few lines so that you guys can understand how this is splitting is happening. So let me add another, let me add two lines more. Uh, let, this is a quantity 10 and let me add, uh, okay. let me make this uh, two, three and five so that we can have 20%, 16%, something like that. Sure. So, This one, let me make it two and let me try to add another line. Make it five. So in this way we have, so total of 10 quantity. All right, yeah, that, that looks good. So also, this is already having a charge. Okay, handling fee 10, not an issue. So now what I'm going to do is I have maintain charges here. So let me try to edit this one and make it $100 so that it becomes easier on calculations. Sorry. It's totally fine. It was in my, it was in <laughs> it's totally fine. Not an issue. So, so Nelson and Krishna, what we've done is that we right now have three lines. So, okay, two, three, and five. So you can see that line number two is actually fifty percent of the total quantity. Total quantity is ten. All right. So now we have a 
charge onto the PO as $100. So now I want to split this charge. So what I'll do is that I'll click on allocate charges. It's really a very nice feature. So allocate charges can also happen in various ways. It's asking me per quantity, then it will split looking at the quantities of each line. Per line means $100. Let me try to apply per line. Per line means $100 is going to be applied onto all of these three lines. Nothing special is going to happen. Net amount means charge will be divided with respect to net amount onto the order lines. For example, if some line is having more net amount than more charge, less net, uh, le uh, a net amount than less charge. Quantity is something that which we usually do. So if I click on quantity, then obviously I want to allocate charges to the all lines. There are no negative lines here because it's not like a return, uh, return order or something. So all lines or all positive lines, you can select anything. Allocate all means allocate to everyone. No need to, you know, go through these because we are, because this is usually not like received or stalled or something like that. We haven't done any kind of receiving yet. So quantity means uh, apply this to all the order lines, but divide them as per the quantity. So now the $100 will be split in these three lines and let us see how it's going to split. If I click on allocate, so here we can see, <clears throat> so allocation has been done. So if I click on, on the second line, which is 50% of the quantity, then I'll be expecting that uh, from $100, $50 uh, should be applied here. So if I click on charges, so we can see the $50 of type freight is applied here. So this is how okay. the division is happening. And uh, then we can see this, um, the quantity of two. So the amount of the charge that should be applied should be two divided by 10, which will give this one means 0.2 and then into 100. So let me try to click on maintain charges. We can see a charge of 20 is applied and this was the previous charge that was applied so it's like mm -hmm. it's, it will keep on adding so this is a mm -hmm. charge that we allocated so this is also applied in this way multiple charges can be applied onto a single PO line and this should be 30 dollars so uh, let me have a look at this one if i click on financials if i click on maintain charges then this will give us $30. So this was per line. Now let me try to delete all of these and I'll show you what is line happening. Line is also the most common way of allocating other charges. They want to apply all the order charges in similar fashion. So let me delete this one. So these are the uh, ways, you know, in which ERP users are constantly applying charges. They like to keep uh, something called, you know, auto charges and they, they just split it. Maintain charges. We delete these so that you can have a crystal clear view of what exactly is going on. So now let me click on maintain charges. I'll try to manually. Now one more thing. So once you allocate the charges, so obviously there should be no more charges on onto the maintain charges from. Otherwise they'll show, you know, uh, they, they're already added on to the order lines. So they should not show up here. Otherwise it will be like adding double charges. So. Is it dash? Yeah. Yeah. So let me add, uh, let me say $20 and uh, instead of fixed, uh, okay, here it's totally fine. So once I do that, so calculated amount is $20. If I try to allocate the charges, now uh, this time <clears throat> I'm going to allocate the charges using the per line. So I'll cal click on allocate all and see now what they are showing. If I click on maintain charges, so now it will show me why is it showing 6.67. Hold on, it's per line, something went wrong. Should be the same. 6.6. Right? 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6. Yes, divided by three, yeah. three lines. And so the, the amount is, uh, is oh, Okay, by. okay, okay. Got it, got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so the division is happening, but you know, all the charges are same, right? So, okay, so this yeah, is the way. Correct. Got it. Okay, so not an issue. 
So this, and similarly, like we can have, uh, you know, if you try to allocate it using the, this method um, in the net amount, then it will, you know, divide the charges proportional to the net amount of, of all amount, the three yeah. lines, okay? So this is how we can apply the charges and then. The, the, uh, there was another option in maintain charges. That is the. Uh, this uh, one? Uh, uh, proportional. What yeah, is proportional? Yeah, so, so these are the charges that are going to be divided proportionally. So they have something to do with the, whatever the product receipt you are doing, whatever the uh, leftovers quantities are there. So you want to apply them proportionally or not. So, so this is for that purpose. I haven't explored this one yet. Although I've done this intercompany percentage, it's like whenever you are creating intercompany orders and really have no idea what external charge. And can you apply a charge that is going to be uh, paid to an alternate payer? Hello? Hello? Christian, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It's like beeping. Oh, okay. Probably connection lost or something. I think he lost the connection. I have no emails. <laughs> hey guys, are you able to hear me now? Yes, yeah. you're back. Yeah, I just lost you for a minute over there. I told you, you know, I'm having some network issues, probably like for one day more. But anyway, thank God we are back. Just let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. and I thought like, why all, we suddenly, we all went mute. <laughs> we also just saw yeah. the same thing, something moved. Yeah, so lost <clears throat> network connectivity there. Yeah, I was so, making a question. Uh, do you have a chance to add a charge that is going to be paid to an alternate payer? Uh, to an alternate payer? I, I don't get uh, your question. Like alternate For example, payer. is a charge that is going to be added to the, to the line. So mm -hmm. that means that is going to be part of the cost of the item when you receive it. But the one that is going to be paid for that, for that charge is not going to be the, the order purchase order supplier is going to be uh, another supplier it, that is yeah, very definitely. common when you use very, uh, very common, cost yes. or something like that okay definitely exactly so that is the reason uh, okay i'll just show you so let me create a charge code for that mm, charge code yeah that is a very common scenario nelson so for that yeah. what we'll do is let me try to add uh, uh, third party freight. Uh, this is uh, because this is not the uh, vendor on which we are going to add charges, right? Correct. So let me say. Uh, so third party. So 
in this case, what we are going to do is that uh, since you are saying that we are going to divide the item, but then instead of selecting the customer vendor here, now we are going to select a ledger item. And suppose, uh, let me let me say, uh, we'll select the order fee type. So let me select uh, my proper posting type. So let me see where it is. Okay, so I'll select the order freight. And now suppose that uh, we have a GL account named. So let me open a new tab. And we have the ledger account for that vendor. Let me say a freight vendor or something as such. So we'll navigate. So this is how we'll take care of that. Uh, navigate to the general ledger. Try to add an account. Let me add any any other account here. So let me say this is some account. So one nine one nine one nine. Let me say the name is the vendor freight. So I'll not save everything. Let me. I think this is sufficient. Let me see if it is activated. Yeah, so so this is now what will happen is now even if we look at charges, the charges will not show on purchase order, but it will be applied. So let me try to create, a, you know, another PO. Try to add a line item. Let me say a quantity of 20. And let me say that this, we are not going to charge the vendor for this, but some other third party. So if I click on maintain charges, let me add the charge of type third party. Okay, I might have posted something else in the description anyway. Let me say it's a fixed charge of $40. Once I click save, so $40 are applied. Okay, and I think there are some other charges also on the maintain charges since this was an auto charge. Let me delete it. So now Nelson, what will happen is once you process this PO, now it, it's right now showing customer charges as uh, vendor charges as zero. But if you process this PO, if you move on to the final invoicing, then vendor is not going to be debited. Let me try to do that. So it is that general ledger account, that ledger account, which is your freight vendor. So that will be uh, credited instead of the vendor being credited. So this is how we take uh, care of this, you know, we try. So it's like an, you have to make a GL account for that alternate vendor. So you can tag that vendor or you don't even need to do that. Just tag it onto the charge code and apply that specific charge code. Because right now it's it's uh, not going to be credited for the vendor, okay? Let me try to add a registration line, add a batch number. Let me say it's A2. Click on confirm registration. Once that is done, to do a product receipt, I want to receive this product. A random product receipt number. Click on OK.
I want to do an invoice. Click on invoice. Random invoice number. Let me post the invoice date as today. Try to match the product receipts. Okay, they're all matched. Update the match status. Past, we'll try to post them and then we'll have a look at the voucher entries posted. The total amount was, uh, we still have some error. Okay, that work vendor invoice until the review process is done. So, okay, okay. And we still have that workflow going on here. No, don't. Okay, we need to get rid of this one. So basically right now what I've done Nelson is uh, we can see that we cannot see the uh, vendor charges here. Uh, the charges are showing zero in the invoice totals. So the vendor is not going to be credited for that charge and the vendor will not receive uh, uh, that postings. Into the GL account, you will see a separate posting of $40 for that third party. So this is how like we are going to take care of this scenario. So the vendor is not going to be credited. The vendor, ha uh, we have to only pay this amount to the vendor, 120,000. Uh, and the rest of the amount is going to be, uh, the rest of the amount, uh, the charge amount that we will pay separately when we will settle uh, those uh, third party ledger accounts. So this is how the things are going on. I hope you get an idea right now. I'm unable to post this because of this workflow. So uh, did okay. you see what I just did? Yeah, I saw. Okay, so so this is the way. So right now, like the, now vendor has nothing to do with charges and exactly is the reason we cannot see any charges here. So once this invoice would have been posted and if you if you look at uh, uh, the the invoice general entries, into the invoice general and then into a voucher, you will see a separate transaction of $40, $40 credit or to what? To that particular GL account that we created for that third, third party vendor. So in this way, the third party vendor will keep on crediting as many as like you want to add those third party freight charges. And then later you can settle those credit accounts, you know, uh, by, by paying to that vendor. So in this way, that settlement will happen. And now that particular process has uh, nothing to do with the charges related to this particular vendor. So this is how that scenario is taken care of. So basically, mm -hmm. uh, we are taking it care on, on the first step. We, we are just creating a new charge code. And that is it. Specifying okay. the vendor, even if you have multiple vendors for third party, then it's again not an issue. You can create as many charge codes as you want and just tag those particular vendor accounts or the GL accounts, and that is all you have to do. So you just have to apply the proper charge code. So that is the first important step, okay? So uh, Nelson and Krishna, like, do you have any kind of doubts in uh, the application of charges till now? I think I would like to try this and then come up with it out because I think I will have. Yeah, please go yeah. to this <clears throat> USMF uh, yeah. legal entity. You know, this has everything, all the configurations required. Okay. So yeah. really need to do all these exercises. Like the exercises are pretty much simple. Whatever we are discussing in the lecture, that you have to try. So these are yeah. the only exercises. Okay. <clears throat> nothing new, nothing old. So uh, with this, uh, I think we have covered our charges. Uh, the charges codes were the most important thing. Header charges, what are the header? So you should not be confused with header charges and line charges. Okay, and the, it is also a possibility that you don't want to split uh, uh, the header charges into the line charges. So just feel free to do that. Click on uh, product receipt and invoicing and in the invoicing report will show you the separate header charge as well as the separate line charge. Let me try to get rid of this uh, workflow because it's the batch process is not also happening properly. Let me see if I can do that in accounts payable, accounts payable workflows. Set up. Somebody definitely 
vendor process and vendor invoice, general workflow, vendor invoice. I think this is the culprit, if I'm not wrong. Let me go to the versions. Let me make this one inactive. All right. All right, now I don't want the vendor invoice, general workflow also. Let me go to the versions and let me make this one also inactive. Okay, so once we do that, we'll try to try to refresh this page. Let me see see whenever we are we fail to <clears throat> post an invoice, so it it goes automatically into the pending invoices. <clears throat> we'll click on edit and let me see if I can actually post this invoice. We try to post it. Uh, invoice matching validation has been performed for one. You must update the match status. I'll update the match status. And try to post it again. Hope this time there's no workflow issue. I think, okay, I think we are good to go now. So vendor invoice has been posted. And if I look at the, so now see, you could see the pending invoices was disabled and invoice, this becomes enabled because one invoice has been posted. So if I look at the voucher now, so it's invoice amount is still showing 120. When I look at the voucher, let me see the voucher entry. Okay, we have another setup missing here, guys. So because of which we are unable to see the voucher entries. So it's like post product receipt in ledger and uh, mm -hmm, a lot of things are missing. Someone is really experimenting with this. Let me see the accounting. The voucher should have been posted properly. So guys, you can see the $40 credit is being done to this account. Nelson, uh, can you see this? Yep. And yep. these are all the interim, interim entries. Okay. And the cost yep. of purchase materials is oh, that amount plus 40 because we were debiting the item. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is how also this is how the entries will keep on going. A lot of the, these things are the interim entries that you can actually uh, you know set up uh, in using various setups. So yeah, you'll get familiar with these. Most of them are credited uh, then debited during product receipt. Some of these entries. So yeah, there are various types of entries. So not an issue with that. So okay, so this is like how we are how we will apply the third party freight. Okay, guys, then uh, I think we've covered everything related to the charges, related to auto charges, header charges, line charges, types of charges, and allocation of various charges onto the order line. So we'll take a quick uh, 10 minutes break, and then we'll come back and start from the sales process. All right? Yeah, sure. Okay, see you after 10 minutes then. <laughs> 